Hey, I'm Mike Backrell, and today we're going to talk about diminished scales, how to construct them, how to play them on the guitar, and where to use them. Let's take a look. <laughs> Diminished scales are symmetrical scales. Symmetrical scales are scales that are patterns of intervals that keep repeating over and over again. So in the case of the diminished scale, we have alternating whole steps and half steps. When you first start looking at diminished scales, one thing that I could think can be confusing for someone starting out with these scales is people talking about, you know, whole half or half whole. And in reality, they're the same thing. I only think of it one way. And for me, I do it as whole half. So to demonstrate, I'm going to start in A flat. I have a whole step, half step, whole step, half step, whole step, half step, whole step, half step back home. The scale is nothing but that pattern. Because the diminished scale is symmetrical, there's only three of them that you can possibly learn. There's not 12 keys like there is major and minor scales. There's only three different options here. So if you play A flat, A, or B flat, those are all separate diminished scales. But once you get to B, a minor third away from where we started, you get the same exact scale again. It might be spelled a little different, but it'll be the same exact notes. And when we talk about fingerings, this will be a huge help for us because we only have to learn two fingerings and we can just move it all throughout the whole guitar neck. So let's take a look at how to finger this scale. Now for me, I only have two positions that I play this in and that covers the whole guitar. So I'm starting this in the key of A flat. However, you can start in any spot on the guitar and just follow the fingerings and it'll match up perfectly for whatever key you're you, you're chosen to start in. Starting here on the sixth string on the A flat on the fourth fret, I'm gonna do first finger, third finger on the sixth fret, and pinky on the seventh fret. So I got one, three, four there. And the numbers only refer to the fingering. On the next string, I'm gonna stay at the fourth fret here. I'm gonna go first finger on the fourth fret, second finger on the fifth fret, and pinky on the seventh fret. So I have one, two, four here. Now this one, three, four, one, two, four alternating pattern is gonna is gonna be true throughout the rest of the scale. Okay, now for the next string, I'm gonna move back a fret. I'm gonna go to the third fret here. Play one, three, four. Next string one, two, four. Next string one, three, four. Next string one, two, four. So this will be just alternating groupings of one, three, four, and one, two, four for our fingers. So that's our first position. And we can move that up in minor thirds for whatever key we're in. So if I'm here in A flat, I can go up a minor third to B. I can go up another minor third to D. I go up another minor third to F. Doing that gives me four spots to use that same exact fingering all within the same key. Now the second fingering I have was a little tough for me to grasp at first because of the way I visualize things. For me, I always think when you practice a scale, you should start and end on the root. Regardless of which position you're in and what the lowest note in that position is, I think you should always start and end on, a, on your root. So if, for example, C major. I think it's important to start and end on that C. So your ear hears it as its thing. And this, for me, applies true for major and minor scales, the modes, all, melodic minor, all those different things. However, with these symmetrical scales, I don't think that's important at all because we're not going to really hear that tonality either way. Because of the symmetrical nature, we don't hear the tonality the same way. So for me, this next position, I'm going to start on the second degree we played on. So we start here in A flat, so I'm going to start on B flat. So I'm going to go... One, two, four, so sixth fret, seventh fret, ninth fret. And then I'm gonna go back a fret. I'm gonna go one, three, four. Same the next string, one, two, four. Then I'm gonna go back a fret, one, three, four. I'm gonna go up a fret, one, two, four. And then back a fret again. You can see on this string I start on the A flat again, which is reminiscent of where we started. I kind of think of this almost as a descending position in my head to help me visualize it because I'm starting on the A flat again. This one's a little more complicated because you're shifting positions over and over again. But if you notice, the fingering pattern is the same alternating one, two, four, one, three, four that it was before. Just the opposite now. Instead of one, three, four, one, two, four, 
it's one two four one three four one two four one three four one two four one three four. To bring this all together, these two positions in my head are one and the same. To demonstrate that. To me, I view this as one position and then it repeats again here and it repeats again here and, and so forth. Now, one thing you could do when you're practicing this scale is because it's symmetrical, you can play up and down one string quite easily because I know it has to be alternating half steps and whole steps. So I start here on the top of this first position, like one, two, four. I know that the intervals have to alternate whole steps and half steps. So I just played a whole step, half step, whole step. So I can find my way between the positions pretty easily too through navigating one string at a time. Now one more approach to fingering this scale. Carl Verheyen showed me this years ago. When he plays a diminished thing, he doesn't think of a scale position. He thinks of his diminished seventh arpeggio. And then he puts a half step below every note. So for, so for an A flat, and I play an A flat diminished. I just put a, a half step below each note. I get a scale fingering as well. So that's another way to approach this. You could keep doing that up and down the neck. I think these are all great approaches to bring in this scale under your fingers really confidently and allowing you to use it musically. So for application, I have two basic applications for this. The most obvious application is over a diminished chord. Over a diminished chord, you can play a diminished scale. So if we see an A-flat diminished 7, we can play A-flat diminished. And the resulting tones are, there's a root, a second, a flat third, a fourth, a flat five, a sharp five or a flat six, a six or a double flat at seven, a major seven, back to your root. other application for this is a dominant seven flat nine chord or just an altered dominant of some sort and this is where the confusion between the half whole and the whole half applications come from so if i play a g7 altered chord i would play a flat diminished over that the reason being is that an a flat diminished seventh chord is a g7 flat nine without a root so if i look at the notes i got a flat it's a flat nine b is our third d is our fifth and F is our flat seven. That arpeggio spells out a seven flat nine chord minus the root. And then if I throw in the other tones from the scale, we have some cool alterations in there. So if I go A flat would be our flat nine, B flat would be our sharp nine, B is our third, D flat is our flat five or sharp four, D is our regular five, E is our sixth, F is our seventh, and G is our root again. We have a flat nine, a sharp nine, a flat five, the three, five, seven, flat seven in the root, and we have a 13 on top of that. So this gives us a lot of colors here. And you'll hear Charlie Parker and Joe Pass and Wes and those guys use this scale quite a bit. That's a really common bebop phrase, and that's right out of the diminished scale. So you could think G half whole, but G half whole diminished is a flat whole half. That's, that's why I think of it as just one way and I just move it. Now the symmetrical nature of this scale means I can move this and start this scale on any of the chord tones. I start on the flat nine, the third, the fifth, or the flat seven, and that and, and doing those diminished scales will give me these those same tones because it keeps repeating in minor thirds, right? So I hope you enjoy this lesson. I hope this is something you'll practice and, and get use out of. And there's a whole mountain of stuff to climb within this scale. There's all kinds of cool arpeggios and all kinds of stuff. So hopefully this helps you get your feet wet so you can start exploring the scale. Thanks for checking out the lesson. Keep practicing. See you next time.